welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers identifications, tasers, and obstruction, and is brought to us by Law and Crime Network's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On February 4th, 2020, Officer Kevin Munger of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office was working as an off-duty security guard at a Publix grocery store in Jacksonville, Florida, when local mother Tawanda Crowell purchased some items, walked back into the store area, and then exited the store. Publix manager Anna Augusto Bonner informed Officer Munger that she saw Ms. Kral exit the store with her items in a bag, but did not see her pay. And Officer Munger approached Ms. Kral after she had already sat down in her vehicle with her 12-year-old daughter and two nieces in the back seat. Uh, oh, right. yes it is! It is not your right. Yes it is! Do you want to sit in my car? No, I don't want to sit in your car, uh, and that, I'm not sitting in your that, car. No, I call your go sergeant. To. No, it that's ain't. What it's you ain't come seen to. me steal nothing. Then show me your receipt. I, I will not. If you took it without paying for it, I don't all they steal. Want, that I all don't want, steal. That all I they do want, not all, steal. All they want to do is I don't not steal. have you here. I don't steal. Okay, then show me I, your I, receipt. I won't do that. Why? I won't do that because. Do you realize you can go to jail for that? Oh, I realize well, if I stole it, but I don't steal. You're not cooperating. I'm not cooperating because it, you ain't got no probable cause because they said something. Go watch the camera first. Ma'am. I walk back in there with you and go watch the camera. Hold no, I'm upset because I, don't, I, I see don't this have every day. I don't have access to the camera. So how are they going to say I stole if they didn't see me steal? Ma'am, what is your name? What's your name? Come now. What's your name? No, that. That, Calm I down. see this every day. Listen to me. They simply asked if you had a receipt. They didn't see you go through a register. That's well, why don't all. they go through all the registers and ask the people if they see me? Ma'am. Let's come on. Let's walk back in there. Let's walk back in there. Just show me your no, receipt. No, no, because that's no. I'm not going to do I'm that. I'm not letting not you bad. go back in the store. Okay, then. Well, Is that your receipt deal. from today? It is, but I'm not showing because I ain't got no receipt. Y'all don't can't make me show nothing. I can. No, you can't. Actually, can. I can. And you're not giving me your ID. So I, I can't prove to. that you didn't take anything. No, you, so you I can't don't know. Prove anyways. Why are we arguing about this? Because y'all profile black people every day like They're, that. Everybody that shops in here is mm -mm. black. No, everybody ain't. Uh, well, most of them are. They is. I can, pro we can profile anybody. I see, I see y'all up here every day bothering people. I don't bother anybody. Whoever, can you just show me your options. receipt? No, I'm not going to do that. Because that makes absolutely no sense at all. I'm not going to Can do I that. see your receipt? If they sent you out here, that, that means they saw me steal. They didn't see you go okay, through a register then, so and pay. Okay, then, so why not do that? Protocol okay. is Step out of the car. to go look on the camera. Then step out of the car. Who step out of the car and come with me. I'm not stepping out no car. Then you're going to go to jail. But then you're going to have to take me to jail. Okay, step out of the car. All these kids in here, you left in here by yourself. Do you want me to push this further? Well, you went in the store? They, they're not little kids. Oh, they are little kids. And you left them all in the store. And what are you going to do when you go to jail and they're all here? So I call DCF to come get them all? My mom will stay right around the corner. Okay, so I don't have to call your mom to come get them. Why don't you show me your receipt? Because Publix and everybody in there. Okay. Step out of the car. I'm not stepping out of the car. You have to step out of the car. No, you have to call your sergeant or your I, lieutenant. Come on. No. You're going no. you're gonna go to jail. No, I'm not. You're no, gonna I'm go not. to jail. No, I'm yes, not. you are. No, I'm not. Then give me your receipt. I'm not giving you my receipt. Come on. No, I'm you're not. Going to jail. No, I'm not. You're going to jail. No, I'm not. You're going no, to jail. I'm not. No, I'm not. You are going to jail. No, I'm not. I'll tell you what I'll do. No, I'm not. You're going to jail. No, I'm not. Call your mama. Officer Munger repeatedly demands that Ms. Crowell show him her identification and her receipt from her purchase at Publix. And when she refuses, he informs her that she is going to jail. According to Section 901.151 of the Florida Statutes, which is known as the Florida Stop and Frisk Law, quote, Whenever any law enforcement officer of this state encounters any person under circumstances which reasonably indicate that such person has committed, is committing, or is about to commit a violation of the criminal laws of this state or the criminal ordinances of any municipality or county, the officer may temporarily detain such person for the purpose of ascertaining the identity of the person temporarily detained and the circumstances surrounding the person's presence abroad, which led the officer to believe that the person had committed, was committing, or was about to commit a criminal offense. Likewise, Section 812.015 of the Florida Statutes states that, quote, A law enforcement officer who has probable cause to believe that a retail theft has been committed by a person and that the property can be recovered by taking the offender into custody may, for the purpose of attempting to effect such recovery or for prosecution, take the offender into custody and detain the offender in a reasonable manner for a reasonable length of time. This statute creates an exception to the general rule found in Section 901.15 of the Florida Code that a law enforcement officer may only arrest an individual without a warrant for a misdemeanor committed in the presence of the officer. In determining whether an officer has probable cause to make an arrest under this statute, Florida courts have consistently held that, quote, information 
furnished to an officer by a store employee who has witnessed shoplifting may give rise to probable cause, as the 4th District Court of Appeal of Florida summarized in the 2018 case of Bent v. State. Here, it is certainly possible that a court could conclude that Officer Munger had probable cause to arrest Ms. Crowell based on Mr. Augusto Bonner's accusation, and it is highly likely that a court would determine that he had reasonable suspicion to detain and identify her. However, it's important to note that Ms. Crowell would not be legally obligated to show her receipt or any identification documents. Come on. No, I'm not. You're gonna go to jail. I'm gonna no. taser you. I'm gonna taser you right here, right tase now. Me. I'm gonna tase you right now. Tase me. Get out of the car. Tase me. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. You're under arrest. You're under arrest. I'm under arrest for what? Get out of the car. I'm under Turn arrest for what? Turn around. Call your mom. Turn around right Call, now. What Turn am I under around. arrest for? Turn around right now for not cooperating. Cooperating? Turn around. I didn't steal. Tasing you right now. I didn't steal nothing. It is. I got in Go away, ma'am. Go away. Keep recording. Thank you. Call him. Officer Munger deploys his taser against Ms. Crowell, bringing her to the ground, and then places her in handcuffs. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Order 551 regarding the department's so-called response to resistance policies states that, quote, it is the policy of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office to allow officers to use only a degree of force which is reasonable and necessary to effect an arrest or to protect themselves or others from personal attack, physical resistance, harm, or death. Prior to any use of force, de-escalation techniques should be applied when reasonable. The policy classifies the use of a conducted energy weapon, or CEW, more commonly known as a taser, as a type of so-called physical control that an officer can use on an uncooperative subject in certain situations. According to the policy, quote, JSO members shall not use CEWs when such use would violate applicable federal and or state laws or JSO policies. Order 551 also states that so-called less lethal force, such as the use of a taser, quote, should only be used when absolutely necessary and only to the degree needed to effect a lawful arrest, overcome resistance, or protect the officer or another person from bodily harm, and that prior to using less lethal force, an officer must consider the severity of the crime or situation at issue, whether the person is resisting the officer's attempt to place them in custody or attempting to evade an officer by flight, and whether the person poses an immediate threat to the safety of the officer or others. Additionally, the policy instructs that, quote, prior to an officer decision to deploy the CEW, the following conditions must be met. The officer must have legal authority to take the person into custody, and the person is, at a minimum, exhibiting active physical resistance, or the subject is an immediate threat to the officer or others, or the person is preparing or attempting to flee in order to resist or avoid being taken into or remaining in lawful custody. Active physical resistance is defined in Order 551 as, quote, physically evasive movements used by a subject to defeat an officer's attempt to control him or her. Active physical resistance, which is more than simply refusing to obey verbal commands, may be demonstrated by one or more of the following acts by the person who is being taken into custody, becoming increasingly more animated or exaggerated in his or her movement and or increasing his or her muscular tension, blading the body and or moving the feet into a balanced or fighting stance, circling the officer, forming a fist, rolling up sleeves or removal of clothing or valuables, verbalization of aggressive of intent and or any other behavior that indicates a likelihood or expectation of violence towards the officers themselves or others. In his police report about the incident, Officer Munger stated that Ms. Crowell, quote, pulled away and told me to get away from her as she pulled away violently. The suspect stood up and I was in fear that she was going to punch me in the face, so I elected to use my CEW to gain compliance. However, while some of Ms. Crowell's movements when she first exited the vehicle may have qualified as physically evasive, the body camera footage clearly shows that when Officer Munger deployed the CEW, Ms. Crowell had been standing a reasonable distance away from Officer Munger with her hands at her sides for several seconds, which could in no way be reasonably characterized as active physical resistance, and would not have caused a reasonable officer to fear that she was going to punch him. Stand up. I ain't going to jail. Just stay there, okay? I'll be with you in a second. You think I'm going to go and steal some chips? Oh, because I'm black? Oh, most definitely. Go. Walk. Walk to the car. So it just got ugly over there, so I had to taser her and stuff. She's going to go to jail. I don't know if she paid for her stuff or not, but she's going to go to jail. So unfortunately, I got myself in a big mess here for no reason. All she had to do was show me a receipt. She wouldn't do it. She wouldn't give me her ID, so here I am. 
Officer Munger repeatedly states that Ms. Crowell is going to go to jail for refusing to provide her identification and receipt, but never identifies the specific offense she has committed. Section 843.02 of the Florida statute states that, quote, whoever shall resist, obstruct, or oppose any officer in the lawful execution of any legal duty without offering or doing violence to the person of the officer shall be guilty of a misdemeanor of the first degree. In interpreting this statute, courts have consistently held that it does apply to individuals who refuse to comply with an officer's lawful orders. For instance, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals concluded in the 2007 case of Zivojinovic v. Barner that probable cause existed to arrest an individual who, quote, disobeyed a command by members of law enforcement. And in the 2008 case of Vadimsky v. City of Melbourne that an individual could be charged with resisting for attempting to leave a lawful Terry stop. However, this does not mean that an individual can be charged with obstruction for simply being uncooperative or refusing to assist an officer with an investigation. In the 1989 case of Robinson v. State, the 5th District Court of Appeal of Florida stated that, quote, the defendant's failure to cooperate, his refusal to answer questions, cannot itself be criminal consistent with Fourth and Fifth Amendment protections. The state's argument would effectively render all uncooperative Terry Stop detainees criminals. Similarly, in the 2020 case of Siraki v. State, the Second District Court of Appeal of Florida held that an individual could not be convicted for obstruction when he refused to obey an officer's commands to step outside of his home and speak with him when there was no probable cause to arrest the citizen. The court noted that, although his reluctance to exit the residence to speak with police may have inconvenienced the officers, his conduct was quote-unquote entirely consistent with his rights under the Fourth and Fifth Amendments. Here, while Ms. Crowell was certainly uncooperative, she was in no way legally obligated to provide Officer Munger her receipt or her identification, and it is therefore likely that a court would conclude she could not be convicted of obstruction for these actions. Who's that other guy? Uh, he works for us. He's off duty. He's got his badge with him, so I just had him check on those kids. I need Anna's uh, date of birth and stuff. Okay. Her okay. information. Okay. I'll get on that. Thanks. Can you send me a supervisor and another unit to Publix? It's 7628 103rd Street, reference to a 1015 that I had to taser. And also send me uh, rescue. You didn't have to tase me. You want to tase me. You want to kick me in my head. Yeah, you, you should have cooperated. No, I didn't. You should have cooperated. You, know, right? I don't have to you, you do have to cooperate. ID What's your I do first not name? I have to give my ID. I don't yes, have you to do. Give my receipt. No, I don't. Okay. Let me step out. Hey, um, is there any chance we could check the uh, meat ball? Hold on a second. Ms. Kral was held in the police vehicle, and when the Jacksonville Fire Rescue EMS arrived, she was offered assistance with the removal of the taser darts. However, Ms. Kral requested to be taken to the hospital instead to have the dart removed by a licensed physician, as one of the darts had lodged in a private area. Another off-duty officer watched the children in Ms. Kral's vehicle until the family was able to pick them up. An additional body camera footage shows that Officer Munger found Ms. Kral's receipt in her vehicle after she was arrested. After waiting for six hours, Ms. Crowell was taken to the hospital to have the darts removed and then taken to jail. She was charged with resisting arrest without violence, but the state attorney's office dropped the charge after reviewing the evidence. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office conducted an internal investigation into Officer Munger's conduct after it received a complaint from an individual who only identified themselves as a so-called disgruntled citizen. A spokesperson for the department stated that, quote, this incident and actions by the officer were investigated by the Internal Affairs Unit by way of a formal complaint. Officer came Munger's actions were cleared by way of the body-worn camera video. Officer Munger's discipline history shows that 25 citizen complaints, including allegations of profiling and excessive force, have been filed against him since 2004. While most of the complaints were not sustained after an internal investigation, because the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office policy is to purge all officer discipline investigations after five years, details on many of the complaints are no longer available. On June 11, 2020, Ms. Crow filed a 50 thousand dollar lawsuit against Publix in Duval County, Florida. The case was dismissed with prejudice in December 2021 after the matter was, quote, amicably settled between the said parties. The terms of the settlement agreement have not been made public. Overall, Officer Munger gets an F 
for unnecessarily using his taser on Ms. Crowell and then misrepresenting the circumstances of the deployment in his report, demanding that Ms. Crowell show him her receipt and identification when she was not legally required to do so, and arresting Ms. Crowell when she refused to comply with his unlawful orders. Although we did not discuss this issue at length in this episode, it should also be noted that when a bystander stopped to film his use of force on Ms. Crowell, Officer Munger ordered her to, quote, go away, and made several negative comments toward the bystander in an apparent attempt to stop her from exercising her First Amendment rights. Throughout the interaction, Officer Munger's behavior demonstrated a complete disregard for constitutional rights, as well as Ms. Crowell's safety and bodily integrity, and showed a willingness to coerce compliance with his demands, regardless of whether compliance was legally required, through both threats and the actual use of physical force. Ms. Crowell gets a B, because although she was likely required to give Officer Munger her name, she stood her ground to defend her right not to assist Officer Munger in his investigation, and even suggested several alternative investigation methods by which Officer Munger could discover that she did not steal the items she purchased without violating her constitutional rights. Although Ms. Crow maintained a hostile demeanor throughout the encounter, she was certainly within her rights to do so, and I commend her for having the courage to question the officer's commands. There is no doubt that Ms. Crow could have benefited from maintaining a calm demeanor, but it is difficult to fault average citizens for falling victim to the emotional stress of an accusatory and threatening police encounter. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.